This was the home of Les Sims, one of the great audio technicians of Dallas. Ford to tell Crest High Fine most of his life. And this is what remains of his business and his uh, work. Let's look at it. Well, look at what's left. Okay. This was his workbench. They slowly depopulated it of its test equipment. Most of it good vintage stuff. Well, we've got an old FM tuner, Radio Shack looks like, yeah. and yeah. then an audio generator, mm -hmm. and then a vacuum tube voltmeter by Heath Kit. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of new stuff. Oh, look at the RCA. That was nice. Yeah. That's a test oscillator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, this is something really interesting, a spot frequency generator. Mm -hmm. Some interesting stuff. You know, we always um, used to put carpet on our workbenches so that we protect what yeah, we're working on. Bad idea. It was because you have these little screws in it. Well, that and static. Uh huh. Yeah, static didn't used to be a problem. Uh huh. Yeah, with tubes didn't care about static. No. Any idea what this is? Uh, some sort of very it's, uh, elegant test equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, have to wonder. It has taps on it where you can adjust points of connection. It doesn't feel like there's uh, anything in it. Yeah. It, maybe it's a, a uh, resistive switch. Yeah, it it might be, I think it might be for a resistor yeah. standard. Yeah. Uh, okay. You'd have to kind of take it apart take the, where yeah. it to. Lift it out and see what's in it. It's a beautiful box. Yeah, so those are your, those are, that's the ohmic rating device. You know this is a fixed amount. You just yeah. right. check your metering with yeah, it. Exactly. So you calibrate your meters with that. Yeah. Okay. It's, I think it's, that's what it is. The, the box isn't dovetailed, so I have to wonder just how old is it. Mm -hmm. It's still a pretty box. Here's a, here's a resistor capacitor. Substitutor. Substitutor. Yeah. All kinds of things. What's this thing? Oh, that's a... Oh. What Here, is that? You have to get a load of this. Panasonic Solar Powered Electronic Calculator. Ooh! What year is that? The 60s? Probably, 70s? Probably the 70s. Yeah, I guess 60s wouldn't have that. Still in this little little plastic bag. Uh-huh. That's kind of neat. Now they're a dollar and they throw them away. Uh-huh. And there's a little test meter. An early inverter to get AC in your car. It's mechanical. So you use a, uh, a vibrator? A vibrator. Yeah. yeah. They'd run a small device. And some meters and bits and pieces. Nothing real exciting. Lots of parts and replacement parts. I wonder. It's rude to open the bag, but you got to know in this case where it's really what it says it is. And it is. What is it? C6 Christmas lamps. Ooh, and glow lamps. That's going on the pile. All right, buffing pads. You don't need a rechargeable battery. Mm -hmm. Those suckers will run forever. They're lead acid batteries, rechargeable, and they're good for about 10 years. a mainspring for something, probably springs for wind up phonographs. That's what they are. Whew, I'm not going to work on those. It's a good way to lose an eye or an arm. Got tons of RF modulators. They're not much use anymore. Let me see. Test devices. Interference meter. Uh, film rewinders. Those are kind of cute. Scope. Plugs, cables. What is this thing? Ah, not entirely sure. A phone? It is uh, some sort of phone. Yeah. These are intriguing. I don't know exactly what they are, but they're made by Scott. Early stereo add-on, but I have no idea what they go to. You know, Scott didn't really embrace stereo until they had to. There's clock motors, 
Excuse me. TV tuner, cables, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Let's go look at some of the fancy stuff in there. Yeah, let's do that. I need to put this on my pile. And I've got some of that. I've got to the closet. Now, the good stuff's in the lobby, of course, but uh -huh. all the lobby, the living room. Okay. Meters, clocks. It's a cute little FM tuner by Granco. So you could add FM to your existing AM. Probably tube type. It's an interesting clock here. Yeah. There's one that was here that's gone that was a timer that was a built in timer clock to a big console radio in the 30s. And it notches all the way around so you could record your. It would turn on so you're up. You would miss your favorite radio show. <laughs> Those are funny. It keeps the filaments from coming on too quick. Yeah, it's, it's a barrister that slows the uh, voltage down until it, it heats up. There's a ham radio down there. I'm talking about it There's not much And left. we also collected vacuum cleaners, oddly enough. There's some great ones in here earlier. There's some polished aluminum ones I'd like to have, but I can't justify it. Ah, oh, here's a computer you've got to look at. All the pieces with the software. That's amazing. Clean the old dot matrix printer. Uh huh. Yep. I mean, that's a that's something you don't find intact anymore. A lot of parts, capacitors, hardware, some test equipment. should have been here earlier before it was all picked over. Oh, a good old soldering rig. Yeah, they're a model that you can't get handles for anymore. Oh, look, here's um, tubes. Yeah. Is that tubes? Oh, that's there's, motors. There, there's, well, those are motors, and these are some sort of uh, tuned radio coil device. Made by National. They're big and short wave. And some of this and some of that. Lots of uh, new old stock electrolytics. You're really taking a chance when you buy used electrolytics, or not, or old stock electrolytics. And even these fit all the old 5 tube radios. It's a 50 plus 80 electrolytic. Uh -huh. We've sold millions of these over the years. They cost us 69 cents sold them for a buck and a half. Mm -hmm. Well, those are probably too old to be any good. Radio Shack Stereo preamp. Huh. Box of them. Audio cables, some turntable parts. You just never know. Mm -hmm. Let's go on around to the big rooms. Okay. This is just turn the records in here. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty well picked over. Unless you like 78s, you want the 78s in there. And then there's traders in there guarding them. Uh-huh. This is not, so they tested it with one of the test equipments in there prior to dismantling the workbench. So I don't have a way to plug this little guy in oh. to yeah. show you anything, okay? I couldn't do it either at home either. Yeah. So I can't do nothing for you, okay? Okay. All right. I well, appreciate you. You're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. I'm sorry You're I didn't welcome. get here earlier. Yeah. No, that's all right. The other three sold. Before. There's only one left today, so this is the only one that's yeah. still left. It's a beauty, but and that's actually the prize of the bunch too. So why is it the prize of the bunch? Because well, it's the pre-war chassis. Oh, can we see the it's inside? Got locked doors, not miniatures. I mean the inside of the front. We already saw. Oh, that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Look that's, at that. That's, that's the early one. How much are you yeah. selling that for? That one today is half price, so it'll be $62.50.
Wow, look at that. Isn't that short so wave too? just need some, need some TLC for it. Well, that's easy enough to get. <laughs> I'm going to take this guy and I got a guy that needs to test some stuff. Can you explain to me what it is? Yeah, what is it? I don't have a traditional plug for it to plug into the wall. Excuse me. Because it looks like it's plugged into another... This little guy, that's not a Some nice ones. Nothing extremely rare. And it will come out here. It's Sentinel Portable. Probably ran on batteries. No, I don't. Okay. I don't. All plastic, surprisingly, there's no cracks in it. This would be really cool if it was cleaned up and had that knob. It has the look. RCA 45 record player, those are always good. There's one of those little FM tuners. <clears throat> this is a pre war Zenith battery long distance radio. This thing will pull in Chicago at night without any problem. Strangest thing GE ever did the 250, 251. It's a battery powered tube set with a cast metal case, weighs a ton. Is that a steel case? It's cast aluminum. Let's see if the, let me put the hood down here. Come on. Oh, shot. Up and down. This is bizarre. It's got a 2-volt <coughs> wet lead-acid battery with a mechanical vibrator to step it up, plus an AC rectifier to run this off of house current. And it weighs about 40 pounds. Hello. Hi. Fine. <coughs> I have a new lock on it this weekend, but that's good. <clears throat> okay. That's what I'm here. Well, I've got a friend who comes up this weekend, got it. Here, so I'm going to work it out, but I appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah, I buy the house, so my friend shoots his bow and arrow at it. Um, just west of the old house, in that sort of that sort of rough area around the utility record player, yeah. probably has a two-speed changer in it. Wow. Nice. General Electric radio record player. This one's got the first magnetic cartridge that GE made. And I'd say this one had a problem. Actually, that's not a problem. That's a new one on me. Mm -hmm. It's a 45 adapter. Wow. Wow. An unusual 45 adapter. It's unusual. It's a slide over and fall down for 45 adapter. Yeah. That's interesting. Not a not an uncommon model, but I've never seen the 45 adapter for that changer. The changer is made by a Crescent. It's like the changer that changes the 45, the early one, that one up on top. There's a spiral under the turntable. The changer changed the record in one revolution. Zip, bang. Same principle as that one. One revolution record changing very fast, but I've never seen one with a 45 adapter. That is really, really strange. Bored out of your mind? Huh? Oh, that's right. We gotta go eat, Alex. Well, let's go eat. Yeah, this is cute. Well, I guess that's it. So give us a thank you for watching, and we'll call it. Ah, thanks for watching. Too bad you didn't get here earlier, but hey.